The first game I played was at Olympic Park and I looked around the rooms and I could see there were only seemed to be about 12 or 13 in the rooms. And I said to Gibson, God, what's going on? Are we short today or something? He said, oh, I don't know. Anyway, at about five to two, three fellows walked in the door in dinner suits, Gladstone bags with their togs, got changed, had a swig of sherry, ran out onto the ground, and they were the three best players on the day. Certainly back in the first match I went to uh, was in the 50s, and there was a guy named Nick Peppard, and, and they'd, have a, they'd have a sherry at three quarter time. You know, I'm this little kid coming out and hear these guys having a drink in the smoke, of course, all smoking. And that was just the way it was then, you know? There were a lot of people who said, oh, the old Zavs, that's all they do, but it's more than that. In my era, we didn't have a lot joining the old Zavs. They had a bit of a reputation as a hard drinking, hard doing group of guys. It turned out that uh, we had a very, very good social side of the club as well, so that with success on the field and success off the field, the old Zavs football club effectively became the go-to club for um, all the kids coming out of school and all their mates who didn't come from Xavier also wanted to come and play with the old Zavs. 1983 there was a group called the Crocodiles who were a strong group of which were mainly our cohort and Michael Scholley and Scott Dennison were very strong in instigating that. So we were like that sort of social club. I guess my main claim to fame is uh, the Crocodiles and uh the four other guys creating the crocodiles. The facts are, it began down at a hotel in Brighton. Scotty Dennison, me and Andrew Quinn and a few Brighton blokes, we used to drink the dev and we'd hatch a plan on how we are gonna win this grand final. And Charlotte found out about a Club 18 competition which was running within the amateurs. There was a team in that, that competition called the Bloods who were very dominant, they were just a standalone team. We decided to um, see if we could get a, a team of friends and just have a great year and see if we could actually knock off the bloods from, from their mantle of being the premier team. It was just a good character to have. All my mates from school uh, were just starting to play for the Crocodiles, so it wasn't named then. The Crocodile uh, logo came into effect because a company I was working for got the licence for Lacoste. It has the Crocodile on, emblem on it. So we all wore the uh, t-shirts with the Lacoste brand on it, so we became the Crocodiles. Thought um, it would be a good idea maybe just to have a point of difference and put the Crocodile emblem on the old Zavs jumper. And we couldn't um, do that because of license agreements, and that was in 1983. We were lucky enough to have a terrific year. Get good players down the middle. Yeah. You get your uh, good blokes around and the good drinkers who people wanted to be a part of. Grand final at Harry Trot, and we end up beating the Bloods by two points. I think Scotty, um, he always had a, a great ability to, to bring people in. A lot of that had to do with his recruiting style. It's the, the spirit of, the, of that group that, uh, that binds them all together. And we had some superstar players. I mean, we had some old guys that were, had been playing seniors and had been playing some really good footy. They liked our style of enjoying the activities off the ground, enjoying playing with their mates on a Saturday and then literally launching straight into to celebrations after a win. I think the su success of the Crocs was mainly based probably the training. Our training venues were just the, the best, of, best of the best. The training venues I'll mention, Middle Park Hotel, the Motel Nightclub, the Redheads Nightclub, the Malvern Hotel would ring the bell and get the free beer, Silver's Nightclub, the Limbo Bar, Chaser's Nightclub, we trained very, very hard at those venues. I think we enjoyed each other's company for a start, so we, we, we loved the blokes that we played with. The thing about the Crocodiles was a, a social team. We had a really good bond. We were always more than happy to train once a week. Uh, we'd train on a Wednesday night, and then invariably we'd have 20 or 30 blokes go and have a palm on a pot. It was such a, a fun team to be uh, to be part of. Afterwards, our, uh, our celebrations were always fun. I look back at Scotty Dennison and Matty Tyrrell and, and I remember their words ringing my ears, you know, don't change your routine. We'd invariably have half of our team rocking up to a grand final straight from the nightclub and getting changed in the change room because that was what they did during the year. They encouraged it, don't change, what you, you know, don't change what's worked and uh, it seemed to work really well for us. The incredible thing about the, the Crocodiles was the access that it gave you to, uh, I think I touched on it before, eventually it becomes a decade younger than you, two decades older than you, that you've got connection with these, uh, these people you never would have known before. We started a thing called a Crocodile Rock where we had 
you know, massive numbers on a Saturday night, hundreds and hundreds of people. Crop Rock, which used to be this massive party that uh, blokes would go to and uh, uh, if we'd played poorly, Sanders would call training on Sunday morning. Some blokes went straight from Crop Rock to training uh, after sleeping in the pavilion. <laughs> Crop Rock's a very famous uh, institution. Now the famous catch cry of uh, come early, stay late. There was always a lot of sore heads after those uh, those nights. I guess the Croc Rock started and that became an institution not only for Old Zabs, other clubs, people from everywhere, the girls from everywhere, everyone started going to the Croc Rock. It was a good time. Yeah, they're a fantastic social club. I mean, the Croc Rock was really ripping. I held the record for the most consecutive attendances at a Croc Rock and the most consecutive uh, day to dawn. So Croc Rocks, yeah, I'm not sure that's somewhere I'm going to go tonight. I did go to a few, but nothing, nothing that I'll share. Lots of stories. My wife's watching this. So. And my son, so <laughs> what, what, what happened at Croc Rock stays at Croc Rock. The stories that emanate from the Crocs from you know, a social point of view were just legendaries. The name sort of taken from obviously the Crocodile um, social team because it was a social event. And we had these big events on the, you know, on the old sausage factory we used to call it at Old Zabs. And uh, we hired the grand out, I don't even think we hired it, we just turned up and put a marquee on it. It was a venue that it was nearly impossible to find at night because there were no lights. It was in the middle of Yarra Park next to Gosh's Paddock. Uh, it was literally a change room in the middle of two or three ovals. Uh, you had to go around the back to get in, so as I said, it was nearly impossible to get in and it was equally as impossible to get out. Once you were in, you were there. You know, a mate of mine, Damien Silk, who played in that team, he then had his business, so he ran the disco and it was called, you know, Croc Rock. You could just play the music all night, you'd lock the doors, and nobody would know you were there. And the Crocs, you know, that, but they too became a bit of a juggernaut and just won premierships because they just enjoyed it so much and had so much fun. Following the success of the footy club in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, there was obviously an influx of players to the, to the club. We needed to accommodate all those extra players. Uh, so that was the, you know, the powerhouses of the competition, really. There was too many kids dropping off after that under 19s period. How are we going to make sure that all the players at Zavs were going to be able to compete and play in the competition? And we introduced the, the Menages, which has proven a, a fantastic success. That's really on the back of old Zavs was how the thirds competition started. It created a great home for this group of mates I was talking about before who came out of the school together who just wanted to stick together and keep playing. I always felt very strongly that it was an important part of the footy club. In that stage there was no under 23s, the Menage has created this great vehicle for people to stick around and has evolved into uh, its its own little uh, own little beast. You know, our sessions we would have had upwards of 70 kids on the track training for one team. But you had these you know, hundreds of kids just hanging around because it was a great place to be. The Menage is in the third environment, which was fantastic socially, uh, but also on field we were very successful. We never lost fact, and this is something that's very important, that we're always part of the Old Zabs Football Club. And anything we did or any successes we had, it wasn't the crocodiles, it was just always as part of the Old Zabs Football Club, the Old Zabs community, and that's what we're always very proud of.